Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about combining multiple jobs uh, that are using form persistence to create one PDF output. And so the specific need in this case is the idea that we have a, uh, a job that is going to be fall, filled out by uh, more than one user. And those users are going to have different responsibilities for this form. So there's a couple different ways that we could handle this. We could just use one job. Uh, probably the smarter way of doing this, though, is using multiple jobs. That way we can keep everything separate. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a shell of a job, and we're going to take a look at the specifics then of how we uh, tie those jobs together. So for each one of these jobs, I'm just going to create a sortable page, and it's going to have a single text field called name. Uh, just keep everything uh, simple. And I'm going to have a, a field then for each one of these that has a value of name. And then we'll just have a submit button and a confirmation page. To the confirmation page, then I'm going to have a uh, a SQL plus module here. So this is this is what it will take then, just in terms of form fields, to to actually build our logic. And so we're going to have four of these jobs. So um, I'm going to call this one job one. And I should say in this demo, we're we're just going to cover the first two. Uh, in the real job, we'd have four jobs. But so we'd have job one. And so job one is, uh, I suppose we can name this job one as well. So what we want to do now is in order to, uh, to combine these jobs, we're going to have to uh, save this information to a database table. And so here I've taken an SQL plus module and I've, I've put it on this page because that's how we save data to a custom database table. Um, though that doesn't mean that this is, uh, the only way to do it. We can essentially tell Rackforms to do this for us. So I'm just going to quick click back here. Here I can uh, scroll through my, my Rackforms database right here. Notice we have a bunch of tables in here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a feature of Rackforms called the SQL Plus Automator. So all I have to do is just put my mouse over a page and I right click and then I say SQL Plus Automator and I select my database type. In this case it's going to be MySQL. A little wizard interface pops up and we then fill in a couple of fields. So first I'm going to say what the table name is. So I'll say job one. And the database name is, in this case, rack forms. And you notice now that we have just one field in here. So we have this name field. You'll actually notice it gets highlighted when I mouse over it. So this is basically telling us then this is the, uh, this is the field that we're going to add to our database statement. Um, we do have a video on the SQL Plus Automator. I encourage you to check it out on the documentation site. Uh, for a little bit more detail, but the basic idea is an SQL Plus module, as we had added earlier, allows us to write to a database table. Uh, the SQL Plus Automator automates that process, but not only does it allow us to create an SQL Plus item to actually essentially set up the SQL that we need, but also allows us to, uh, to uh, perform uh, table create options as well. So I'm going to look at the insert actions under here. So we, we basically set the connection information right here. We look at our database fields right here. And then here we have our creation actions. And so under this uh, set of actions here, I'm going to go to the insert action. And I'm going to say create my table and add an SQL plus insert item. So if I click this guy right here, it's going to say take my table name to this database and create my database table for me and add the SQL plus insert item to write to that table. So if I look at my database now and I hit F5 to refresh here, you'll notice now that I have job one and it's got a single field called name. And then on my job itself, I'm going to insert into job one the name value. And so we can actually test this out then. So um, I'll submit this through. We go to our confirmation page. If I refresh my data hitting F5 once again, we now have that entry called Matt right here. So we don't need to write SQL, of course, to write to custom database tables. Now, what I essentially want to do is duplicate this so I'm going to rename my job. And in Rack Forms, the way we essentially create copies of jobs is we just rename them and then save the job name. And then when I publish a form, I'm going to create an exact copy of that job. So now I have in my system here, I have job one and job two. And so what I want to do then is I just want to change my uh, text here. Makes a little bit more sense. So I'll say job two. And then I'm actually going to clear this guy out right here. And I'm going to run the SQL Plus Automator again. So I'll right click, say my SQL. But this time for table name, I'm going to say job two. And database name is still going to be rack forms. And then once again, I'll hit table and SQL plus insert item. And again, this is going to create my SQL plus item and it's going to create my table for me. So go ahead and click that and then close the wizard out. 
So now we're inserting in the job two name. And notice if I hit, once again, F5 here, here's job two in our table. So now if I run this form through, I can put in a second name, so we'll say John, and I'll hit submit, go to our confirmation page, and sure enough, if I refresh my database values here, we'll get this right here. So we would just repeat this then as many times as we needed to get our information. The point being that on this first page right here, so it really doesn't matter if uh, how we actually get to this point in the job. What matters is, is at the end uh, that we're submitting using the SQL Plus module. Right? So we're saving our data to a database. And you're going to see why this is in just a second. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter if we're using, uh, uh, for example, form persistence on here. Right? It doesn't matter if we've used a login to get this job. It's always going to be about the form page or pages and the confirmation page sending those results to the database. Okay, so, so you got that. Let's go ahead and create job three now. And job three's job is going to be to query the first two tables for job one and job two and display that information to our users. So I'm actually going to get rid of my confirmation page here and I'm just going to say job three. And then I'm going to uh, add two query modules to this job. So I'm going to query the database twice. So query, query. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna essentially say select all from job one And we would, uh, I should mention, probably have a where condition on this, right? So if we were actually doing uh, this in a production environment, we would have done a little bit extra setup, right? So a user would have to log in or provide some kind of ID so that we could uh, actually target them when we're performing this step. In this case, because we know there's only one entry, we're just going to say select all from job two and job one, um, though, again, most likely, if we're doing this in production environment, there'd be a unique ID associated with this, and we would query against that. But for now, again, it's just the basic logic here. So we have two query modules, one selecting all from job one, one selecting all from job two. I can actually turn on my data dump for both of these guys. And when I run this uh, job now, you can see here that I have Matt and John, right? So the two values from these two forms is actually populated. Now, the PDF creation step then is pretty simple in Rack Forms. All we have to do is essentially use tokens to pluck out these values so that we can then uh, create essentially a template. So in this case, create database to FEQueer, I'm actually gonna change these names. So I'm gonna say job one, and then job two. Now the reason why I do that is because when I actually run this job here, we actually create a PHP variable that is in fact an array that has our values in it, right? So Job one has a value of Matt. Job two is an array that has a value of John. We essentially map that then like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a, uh, let's create just some body text right here. And I'm gonna say job one, put a dash, and then I'm gonna use what we call a token. So Rackforms has several different tokens. We can usually see what tokens are supported by mousing over these little tooltips. In this case, the token that I want is uh, essentially a PHP variable. So notice uh, on the uh, left-hand side there, we have dollar sign and then two braces, PHP. So the way that we actually got values out is I'm going to say dollar sign, these two brackets like this. And then I'm going to say job underscore one, zero, and name. So this is the output, job one, and I get Matt. So how do we get Matt out of this right here? Well, basically what happens is if we look at our text right here, let's scoot this over a little bit more. Job one, and you can actually kind of break this out. So these braces aren't, these are just to tell Rackforms this is a special value. The part that we care about is this right here. So basically what we're saying is we're saying job one is the name of the PHP variable, which it is. Zero is the index of the array, right? So zero right here, because we know we're returning one value, is the zeroth index, and then this block right here is the name of the field that we want. So notice that we put single tick marks and then the name of the field. In this case, the name of the field is name. So we basically construct this, and as long as we don't have any funny spaces or anything like that, we could basically do that for each one of these values. So I could put in some HTML here, paste this in, and say job two is equal to job two name. And now when I build this, you'll notice I get job one, Matt, and John. Now to actually build a PDF out of this then, all I have to do is just select the page, scroll down to PDF options, say yes, 
and when I publish this form, it's going to automatically create a PDF for us. Now it should be noted here that the the different PDF libraries have different formatting attributes. So notice here, of course, that DOM PDF is doing a pretty poor job of our, uh, our sortable layout here. So I'm going to actually try TC PDF to see what that looks like. This looks a little bit better, right? And then MPDF has its own design characteristics. So you generally want to play around a little bit and make sure that uh, you're getting the type of output that you want. And you can see here that in this case, the Firefox uh, PDF viewer doesn't like MPDF at all. So usually, though, between one of these three PDF libraries, we're going to get some output that we want. Finally, I should note that here we're just directly outputting the browser. We have different modes that we could do. So we could say, actually, let's do a download prompt. So I could say TCPDF. When I run this form, we can prompt the user to download it. Um, usually not necessary because most uh, browsers, of course, especially Firefox, now have their own PDF URIs built in, um, but still nice to have. And finally, we can use save for email output. We actually have a demo job of this under load example job, PDF. And so emailing PDFs right here. And this job actually goes through the process of how we use uh, essentially the same technique that we just did right here, basically building a uh, using tokens. You can see one right here, this F token right here, to basically create dynamic uh, templates for us. And then this job then says, well, this is how we actually have one page create a template, which is then automatically emailed to our user. So there's lots of little cool things that you can do with this. But again, the basic idea here was create our two jobs, submit each one of those jobs to a database and we can have rack forms create the database table in logic for us and then for the third job in this particular case we're going to use tokens using database queries to essentially say go ahead and grab the data from that uh, those tables that we've been saving to and then we use these tokens then to create a template and notice now that so long as I've named these guys right right here this is all we'd have to change so if I had a number another field called let's say email I don't have to really rewrite that token. All I have to do is just copy it, and then when I paste it in, I could just say, grab the email field, right? And that would work out fine. So that is a quick look at uh, some of this logic. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at rackforms.com. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.